let's talk about this book, The Decline and Fall of the British Empire. This was a treat to read. This was wonderful. I really, really love this book. Um, uh, the premise of the book is really not about the decline and fall of the British Empire. It really isn't. That's sort of a misnomer or a marketing grab. It's not about the British Empire, say, in the th uh, you know from the 30s to the 70s when it was becoming more and more apparent that they were not going to keep this vast empire that they once had. It's not just about uh, the partition of India or the creation of dominion status for Australia or. Canada or something like that. This is more about every single moment from the beginning of the British Empire to the to the very end a few decades ago where everything went wrong. It's just a collection of failures of the British Empire, of retreats in many ways. And even in the parts where it's not talking about the retreats, it's talking about the gains. It's talking about the screw-ups that went along with them. You know, the story, it says on the cover, it begins in 1781. You may think, well, what part of the British Empire did they lose then? Well, they lost the United States, of course, so they didn't really have much of an empire at that point to lose, but it still talks about it, and it's really, really exciting. Everything that he talks about is fun. There's a lot of humor in here, and the way he seamlessly puts it into the narrative, for instance, in the first chapter about losing America, he mentions that the largest single military expenditure for British soldiers during the Revolutionary War was liquor. You know, it wasn't clothing, it wasn't guns, it wasn't gunpowder, it wasn't building new ships, it wasn't paying troops, it was buying liquor, buying rum for the soldiers and sailors. And there are tons of little gems in here like that all throughout this book that are really funny, that show how ridiculous uh, people within the Empire could be. It goes through almost every area of the British Empire, from the Falkland Islands to tons of stuff about India, wide stretches of Africa from Egypt and Sudan to all the things going on in South Africa and the Boer War to West East. It talks about Australia, it talks about Canada. There's a wonderful section here talking about the building of the railroad through Western Canada and how at one point the Canadians actually burned their parliament building down in the early 1800s to express how angry they were. Uh, it, it talks about virtually everything, and it goes into great depth about them. Uh, and it doesn't shy away from the dark stuff. You know, the, it's not just humor. It's, it also goes into great detail about the viciousness and brutality, like the putting down of the Indian mutiny, where uh, Indian soldiers that were captured were brutally put to death. They were strapped to cannons and literally exploded apart as the cannon was fired right behind them. Uh, some Muslim soldiers were slathered in pork fat before in front of their families and humiliated while they were crying or before they were executed. Uh, it talks about how they used uh, blowing people from cannon into the late 1800s and really, really brutal violence during the uh, the Kenyan independence. Something that I would really like to read about. I want a, a big book, not just a chapter in here about uh, the fight in Kenya. I think English language historians have a tendency to overemphasize the problems that the French face, sort of rubbing it in their noses how they lost in Vietnam and Algeria, but not really going into the savagery that went on in Kenya. I mean, there was the brutal concentration camps, and that's really what they were. They said they were POW camps, but I don't know if that's exactly the right way to put them. Especially considering people were battered with bayonets in the arms in a huge line, just like people walking into Dachau uh, in Kenya were absolutely savage. Uh, there were brutal extrajudicial killings, there was torture. You know, there's a famous movie, The Battle of Algiers, made about the serious violence that the French troops meted out to the Algerians. There's nothing about Kenya, there's no equal movie that shows the British in that bad light. And uh, it doesn't mention that the British also lost in Kenya, you know, like this book does. It also goes into the realities of the brutal conflict in Malaya, you know. English language historians, I think, have a tendency to say, oh, well, the French, oh, they lost in Vietnam, but the British more or less lost in Malaya. It wasn't this great success story where everything went good and they did everything right. It was a brutal, vicious conflict that they happened to kind of not lose at and then leave. You know, they still left. Malaysia still became independent afterwards. They were kicked out as so clearly as the French and Americans were, but the British were still kicked out. It also goes into things that I hadn't really heard much about before, like the British leaving uh, uh, Israel, what, what became Israel, what was then Palestine, and uh, the conflict they had with the Israelis and the Palestinians there, and also the 
brutal conflict that they had in Cyprus, which I had never heard anything about before. That was really fascinating. So everything about this book is going through exciting, interesting, wonderful stories. It's very easy to read. You can just pick up and read it. You just read a chapter here, a chapter there. Don't be intimidated by the size. Uh, it's, it's not something that you, you know, it's something that I think you can read a chapter at a time, and it's pretty easy reading. Uh, speaking of which, the only uh, problem I can say about the writing is that he really over relies on uh, quotations. I mean, every page, or essentially virtually, you know, virtually every page has a couple of quotations on them. You know, like a lot of what he's writing just seems to be quoting other people. And it's interesting to hear what these people have to say, but he spends a lot of time on it. And I think it probably would have been better if he... Uh, used his own writing rather than somebody else's quotation. But anyway, this is a fantastic book. It's got a lot of humor, it's got a lot of excitement, it's got a lot of stories you don't hear about in other places. It doesn't shy away from the brutality of British rule in many places. It doesn't shy away from the good things. It talks about virtually every aspect of the Empire from the late 1700s to the late 1900s. It's really wonderful. I think you should check it out. It's a lot of fun.